The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and they will pass. This is the good news of our salvation. When we see Jesus' words and his images, we again must put them into the context of the revelation to the chosen people as preserved in the Old Testament. One of the great prophets of the Old Testament is the prophet Hosea. And in his second chapter, preserved in the writings of the Old Testament, he tells how God, Yahweh, will marry Israel. This is very powerful in Hosea because he had a wife whose name was Gomer, and she abandoned him and abandoned the religion of the chosen people to follow the pagan gods of the Canaanites. And this was a terrible tragedy in his life. And he realized from the infidelity of Gomer, the defection, the apostasy, that this is how God felt when she and the other Israelites were attracted and worshipped the Canaanite fertility gods rather than Yahweh. And so it touched him on two levels, his human love for his wife and their children and his love of God. He could sympathize, empathize with God. But he had hope Gomer would return, and if she returned, he would accept her. We marry her on a deeper level after she realized her mistake. And he thought, this is exactly what God is going to do with Israel. Even though Israel had abandoned him for the pagan gods, he would forgive her remarry her when she returned, realizing her terrible mistake. This is repeated in the 66th chapter of Isaiah. God is the bridegroom of Israel, who becomes the mother of all the members of the chosen people. Now this application in the life of Jesus has real impact because Jesus is telling us the human Jesus the divine Jesus that he is the bridegroom of his church St. Paul uses another image which again shows the intimacy the interrelationship between Jesus 
and his church, his kingdom. Jesus is the head of the mystical body. This is seen in the epistle to the Corinthians in chapter 12. It's also seen in the first chapter of the epistle to the Colossians. Jesus is the bridegroom of the church. When Jesus is talking, therefore, in today's gospel, that he is the bridegroom, and this will blossom forth after his death and resurrection when he sends the Holy Spirit to create the church at Pentecost, he's talking about his real presence, the presence of Jesus, therefore, during his earthly life, the disciples of Jesus could see him. They could hear him. They could interrelate with him. They could talk with him as with any other human being. And Jesus said he wasn't going to fast them, be absent from them like an overseas worker. He was going to be with them and they could experience him. That's how he interpreted the word fast. Not just absence of food, but absence of the presence of Jesus. So after his resurrection and his ascension into heaven, there is a fasting on Jesus in the sense that we do not see him, we do not hear him, we cannot talk to him the way the apostles could talk during his public life, during his earthly life. But this does not mean that we can't feast on him on another level. We feast on Jesus when we receive him in holy communion. And so even if we will see him as he is when we go to heaven. We have a real presence of him during this life as we are living in the church of today, as we are celebrating the season of Lent in preparation for Holy Week and preparation for the great feast of Easter. Thank you.